Okay, thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Alina. Thank you, Mayura, for your confirmation. Are there any questions, anything before we start? Oh, one question. So I did the practice test, and one of the questions it asked us to graph to plot the points on the graph. But when I clicked on the graph or clicked in the box, it wouldn't allow me to, to graph the points. Um, so I'm not sure how you do that question. You have to show me during the break. Oh, okay. Okay, okay yeah. Okay, questions from online students. Okay, before we start the class, just a reminder that uh, test two. Tuesday at six o'clock. Yeah. Tuesday, May 30 at six. It is going to be online test like test one at home, now class on Tuesday, May 30. After you finish your test two, I pre-recorded the lecture for lecture nine. So lecture nine, it is a pre-recorded lecture. You watch lecture nine by yourself. So that is the next Tuesday, May 30. And then, uh, May 30. And then on June 1st, on June 1st, that is a Thursday. Uh, in class, I will present lecture 10. Okay. Uh, and test two, we'll cover chapter three, chapter four, chapter five in the textbook, or module, module four, module five, module six, module seven. Okay. So that is the coverage of test two. The format would be similar to test one. Most questions are multiple choice questions. Okay. They may have some questions fairly in the blank short answer graph. Just very few questions. Okay. And for my lab, the due date. 29th on Monday. Thank you, 29th on Monday. But I modified the due date so that, uh, give me one second, I just want to show you the module four. Module four on my lab extended to May 29 because module four is on, see module four is on test two, oh. okay? And module eight, Initially, module eight was due uh, May 29, but I extended to June, June 12, because module eight is not on test two. Oh. Is that clear? Yeah. So, uh, thank you. <laughs> okay, any questions on those two items? When we complete the module, is it supposed to update the mark in the um, in the in D2L? Yes, when you complete the module, it's supposed to update mark, but sometimes I keep saying zero. Like it says when I log up back onto D2L after doing the module, it, it says uh, it says uh, lab number six, linear equations updated, and the mark is zero. Oh, let me double check. You, your other modules mark is okay? No, um, the same thing with all of those as well. Oh, give me one second. Yeah. But I don't update every time, yeah. It, mine says updating, but when I go and click on grade, it, they're all it's zero. It's, I thought maybe it was supposed to be like that. Um, it's not, so I check. So your mark on D2. Okay, thank you. So that means maybe um, 
Go to the next one, my life, my life, my life. This is not what I, I had to. Do. Even showing it. Yeah. So it also says zero 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 zero, and I can log into the my my labs, and you'll see I've done all of them. Okay. Uh, so, so like, this give me one second. I need to sync it. Then you see if it is updated. But uh, his mark is uh, so. Just give me one second. I uh, will. Uh, you don't know my lab. You don't know my lab. Does your mark updates in need to know after you do it? Uh, they update. Sometimes it'll update like today, like today, even though I didn't do it, but then the next day it'll update again. Uh, can you refresh? Log out, log in again. Uh, like this is zero to zero? Yeah, mine said zero to mine said zero to zero, but then half the side is the percentage. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Now it says the percentage. So oh, it's a zero to zero. It says the percentage. Oh, okay. Thank you so much. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much. Okay, guys. Just a question for my lab grid on D two L. That question is sorted out. Thank you for your patience. Uh, so, any other questions? Okay. Um, as usual, we we'll do lecture first, then we do the tutorial. Um, today is lecture eight. Uh, for those students just came in, remind about test two next Tuesday, and also due date for my lab. Okay. Okay, uh, please ask questions throughout the lecture. You can type in questions in chat area or unmute yourself. Okay, I'll just double check the lecture is recorded so that I can post. Yeah, it is recorded. Okay. Um, so I will focus on the examples and the questions in the lecture, okay? You can read over the exponential functions applications by yourself. So what are the exponential functions? So first of all, we need to distinguish function like fx equal to two raised to power x and gx equal to x squared. Those two functions are different. Okay, if you are looking for g x equal to x square, the variable is the base, x is in the base position. If you look at f x equal to two raised to power x, the variable is exponent. Okay, so for f x equal to two raised to power x, this one, is exponential function. Can anyone give us a name for what is the function for x equal to x squared? Can somebody give us a name for gx equal to x squared? What is the name? Remember what we did last class, last lecture? Quadratic function. Okay. It's quadratic function. Isn't it missing? It's only got one. This is a special format of a quadratic function. It is belong to quadratic function or polynomial. Okay. Usually quadratic function is ax squared plus bx plus c. So when b equal to zero, c equal to zero, you got just 
uh, a equal to one. So you got a special quadratic function that is x squared. Okay. All right. So the definition for exponential function, so fx equal to b raised to power x, b greater than zero, b not equal to one. Okay. And we call this is a, a exponential function. So b is called the base. And the domain of f is all real numbers. The range is all positive real numbers. So questions? Okay, now let's plug fx equal to two raised to power x. Let's graph this one to graph you give some point for x, suppose x equal to negative four, negative three, negative two, et cetera. Once you are given the x, figure out what is two raised to power x. So for example, you get one over 16 because one raised to power negative four equal to one over 16. And the next one, a two raised to power negative three equal to one over eight. Okay. And then two raised to power negative two equal to one over three, et cetera. And then you got X and FX pair of the points. You got the pairs. And you put those pairs on the graph, this is x, and this is fx, or sometimes we also call y, y is fx. See, you got some point, when x equal to negative four, y equal to one over 16 is here. When x equal to negative three, y is one over eight, et cetera, et cetera. And then you connect those points, this graph, represent fx equal to two raised to power x. Okay. Questions? Okay. Uh, the properties of graph fx equal to b raised to power x. So all graphs contains the point zero one, See, this point is zero one, zero one. All graphs are continuous curve with no holes or jumps. It is very smooth curve. X is horizontal uh, asymptote. So X, so this extend, extend forever, but never touch X axis. So X axis is a, a simple top. If B greater than one, BX increase as X increase. So for example, if B equal to two, and you got two raised to power X, two raised to power X, we just did this graph, it is this, this is two raised to power x. So when you increase x, y also increase, okay? And this one, if b smaller than one, greater than zero, b raised to power x decreases as x increases. So for example, if b equal to one over two, Okay, one over two is between zero and one. So one over two raised to power x, what is the graph looks like for one over two raised to x? It is no, it looks like this. So this is y, this is x. This graph is one over two x. 
And this graph, when you increase x, y decrease. Do you see that? When you increase x, y decrease. Can somebody tell us what is this point here? Look at number one. This point is zero one. All exponential functions will go through zero one. So this point is zero one, and this point is zero one. Okay, so the shape of the exponential function, it is either this one or this one. How do you know which one is which? When b greater than one, it is increasing. When b smaller than one, greater than zero, it is decreasing. Questions? Uh, I just saw a question. Uh, thank you. Uh, Nelson, for your question. The question was, would lecture eight be in test two? Uh, so lecture eight is not in test two. Okay, so at the beginning of class, we talked about what is the coverage of test two. The coverage of test two, module four, module five, module six, module seven. We use module with lecture interchangeably. You can say lecture four, lecture five, lecture six, lecture seven. Those are in text two. And for chapter content in textbook, it is chapter three, chapter four, chapter five. That is the coverage for text two. Okay. Other questions? Okay. Um, so where we are, we are here. Um, some other properties of exponential functions. So if you have a raised to power x times a raised to power y, it is a raised to power x plus y. So for example, three raised to power five times three raised to power seven, it is just three raised to power five plus seven equal to three raised to power 12. Okay. Uh, next property, AX, A raised to power X over A raised to power Y. So three raised to power five over three raised to power seven. It is three raised to power five minus seven. So equal to three raised to power negative two. Three raised to power negative two is one over three raised to power two. And it's just one over nine. Okay. And this one here, a raised to power x bracket raised to power one. So for example, 3 raised to power 5 bracket raised to power 7. It is 3 raised to power 5 times 7. 3 raised to power 35. And the next, A times B raised to power X. For example, 3 times, uh, three times H raised to power 4 equal to three raised to power four times eight raised to power four. Okay, so those are the exponential laws. Uh, the second law says if a raised to power x equal to a raised to power y, if and only if x equal to y. Okay. Uh, so for example, uh, if a raised to power x plus 5 equal to a raised to power 2x minus 9, if this is equal, this is if, and only if x plus 5 equal to 2x minus 9. And from here, you can solve for x. 
So move this X to right hand side, move this negative nine to left hand side, you got five plus nine equal to two X minus X. So you got 14 equal to X. Okay. I pause for a moment to see if you have any questions. Okay. okay. Uh, now we talked about, so far we talked about general exponential functions base B, and there is a special situation base E. And what is this E? This E approximately equal to 2.71828, etc. Okay. Um, so this base E exponential uh, functions. So y equal to E raised to power x. Uh -huh. um, I make this bigger. We are now let's look at an example. Determine whether each of the following expressions is an exponential function. Okay. Uh, remember when we define exponential function y equal to bx, b must be positive, b must not equal to one. That is the definition. Base is positive. Base is not equal to one. Now look at A. Three raised to power x. Is this an exponential function? Yes, this is. Let's look at B. Is B an exponential function? Anyone? Is this one exponential function, negative three raised to power x? Isn't that basically three to the power of one? It is not exponential function because we do not allow base is negative. See here, base must be positive number. Oh, okay. Now you got negative three. So it is not an exponential function. We need the base is a positive number. Okay, next one. Y equal to negative three raised to power x. Is this an exponential function? I would say no. This is yes, because this negative one, negative, Negative three, negative three, this is not equal to negative three raised to power x. So this equal to negative one times three raised to power x. So it is a negative, it is a exponential function. Okay. Okay, any questions? So how about last one? Y equal to three raised to power negative two X. Is this an exponential function? The answer is yes, because base B, B equal to three greater than zero. Huh? Okay, questions? All right, so now let's do example two. Evaluate exponential function. Okay. Uh, evaluate y equal to negative two times four raised to power x for the given value of x if x is two. So you plug in x two into y function. So four raised to power two is 16. 16 times negative two, negative 32. Yes. 
Um, so the question is, what is the difference between if the power outside the bracket and inside the bracket? Okay, so it, I'll give you another similar example. If it is here, if it is negative two times four raised to power x, they are different. So this one does not equal to this one. Okay, so let's figure out what is this one. if raised to power inside the bracket. So this one equal to negative two times four equal to negative eight raised to power x. This is not an exponential function because negative eight is smaller than zero. Okay, we, in the definition, we ask b, this is base, must be greater than zero and not equal to one, okay? So this is when you have exponent here. But this one is an exponential function because this one is the same as negative two times four raised to power x. And this x only control four. Negative two is another item. So you have two items times together. And this x control this bracket. Do you see the difference? Other questions? So that is the introduction about logarithm um, exponential exponential function. Next, we will introduce logarithmic functions. Okay, so if you have y equal to b raised to power x, and then x equal to log b y. And we call y equal to bx is exponential form. x equal to log b, y is logarithmic form. So let's practice the notation, okay? Um, so if, if y equal to c raised to power z, then z equal to what? Can somebody write down what is z? I just changed the letter just to practice the notation. If y equal to c raised to power z, z equal to what? Where oh, is sorry, it? Sorry, Z. Z Just look at this. Anyone want to try? So it would be the log. Of Excellent. Yeah, continue. It would be the log of um, C. Yes. And then. Um, <laughs> And then y. Perfect. You got it. Okay. Okay, let's practice another one. Okay. If A raised to power x equal to B, if, okay, uh, or maybe equal to, yeah, B, then x equal to what? Be the log, the log of A and B. Excellent. 
So just play with around with the letters, okay? Okay. Uh, so let's do an example one. Uh, maybe I want to pause for a moment to see if you have any questions. Uh, actually, there are two ways, uh, and then if I will write up from here, I can write down another one. If x equal to log b y, then y equal to b raised to power x. You can look at another way. Okay, so let's look at example one. For each of the following, determine the change of form that is needed to solve the problem. So if you have y equal to two raised to power x, solve for x. So based on, this is very important, this box. Okay. So just based on this box, so x equal to, somebody want to try? Equal to log what? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Questions? Okay, so question B, if log 4y equal to x, solve for y. And be y equals um, 4 to the power of x. Perfect. So make sure you do example. One, this is the starting point showing the relationship between logarithmic function and exponential function. Just play around with the letters. Questions? Um, so if you write down a function in logarithmic function, we still require b greater than zero, b not equal to one. Mm -hmm. How can b can be one? Or like, opposite oh, oh, the base? Yeah. Opposite oh, the base. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's look at example five here. Evaluate logarithmic function. If you have y equal to log 2x, then when x equal to 16, what is y? So, you just plug in 16 into x position. Okay. And then, um, so this one, so you got log to 16. 16 is the same as, this is two. Two raised to power four. And then you can, there is a property saying that you can move this four in front of log. So log two, okay. And then another property said, if you have a log a, then a, this always equal to one. For example, log b, b equal to one, log x, x equal to one. So log two, two equal to one. This is the final answer. Okay, 
So next, if x equal to one over 16, and you plug in x into one over 16, and this one becomes log two, one over 16 is a uh, two raised to power negative four. Okay, uh, I want to write down the property. If you have log a, b raised to power m, you can move m in front of log. This is our property. Okay. So, so we move negative four in front of log. And then this is just negative four. Questions? Okay. Uh, now let's graph the logarithmic function. Graph y equal to log 2x. Are they just choosing any like arbitrary values? Yeah, you can choose any arbitrary value for x. Oh, okay. Just pick a couple of them. Do not pick just two. Pick at least five, six, seven points. Oh, okay. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, at least six points for X. Okay. Okay, so we pick um, X equal to one over four. When X equal to one over four, when X equal to one over four, Y equal to log two raised to power, no, log two, one over four. One over four is the same as two raised to power negative two. And then you move negative two in front of log. So you got negative two. Okay, why you put negative two? Okay. Uh, similarly, when x equal to one over two, when x equal to one over two, you got y equal to log two, one over two. One over two equal to two raised to power negative one. You move negative one in front of log. It is negative one here. Okay. Okay, once you get all the points, um, we, we can graph here. So when x equal to one over four, y equal to negative two. Suppose this is negative two. When x equal to one over four, y equal to negative one, maybe this point here. So when x equal to one, y equal to zero. When x equal to two, y equal to one. When x equal to four, y equal to two. When x equal to When x equal to eight, y equal to three. So something like this. This is y, this is x. Okay. And this graph represents y equal to log two x. This is the graph. Questions? Um, this is the inverse function, procedure for finding inverse function. Let's do an example. Uh, what is an inverse function? It's just the opposite. Um, so, if you hold up a mirror, right? It, it, it goes to the opposite. So if you hold on me, if you hold on me here, this straight line y equal to x. So they are mirror to each other. Yeah. yeah. So if it's in the, so like if it's in the first quadrants and this. So remember in the, 
Third, no, second, right. So, for example, this this is a two raised to power x, and this is log two x. So those are the inverse functions. They mirror each other in relation to y equal to x. Okay. Remember, we graph the graph for two raised to power x. It looks like this. We also graph log two x. It looks like this. So those two mirror each other, relating to this y equal to x. Okay. Okay. Um. So see example seven. Function y equal to two x and y equal to log 2x are inverse functions. You see, if you have y equal to 2x, you take some value for x, you get the y, and then when you have y equal to log 2x, you take some value for x and you got those y. Did you see it? <laughs> x becomes y when you have the inverse function. So compare this table with this table. What did you see? The first table x becomes the y in the second table. The first table y becomes the x in the second table. Is, is lin the same thing as log or no? Lin, ln. Thank you. Ln, ln, we'll do it later or next. You, you watch the pre-recorded lecture. Oh. This is equal to log based on e. So ln x equal to log based on e. What is e? E is the natural number. Okay. Okay. Questions? Uh, properties of logarithm. We already did this b raised to power u. b raised to power u times b raised to power v equal to b raised to power u plus v. Okay, we, we did this. That is the property for exponential uh, functions. Um, Uh, this is the divide. So we just focus on the product for logarithm. Okay. Okay. Log b x times y equal to log b x plus log b y. For example, log two four times seven. This equal to log two four plus log two seven. Okay, so that is the first property. And the second one, if you have log two four over seven, it is equal to log two four minus log two, seven. Okay. Uh, the last one, log two, and then uh, four raised to power eight, just for example, you can move this eight in front of log. So those are the examples of these three properties. Questions? All right. So we are here. 
Next one. Is the example. Uh, let's do this example, then we can take a break. Example two. Sum of logarithm has a single quantity. So let's use the property. So log four three plus log four x equal to log four three times x. Okay, so which property we used? We use we use log b x plus log b y equal to log b x times y. We use this property. Okay. And the next log four three minus log four x equal to log four x over three. This is because we use log b x minus log b y equal to log b x over y. And C, log four three plus two log four x. We copy down log four three. We move this two. We move this two as exponents here. This two goes over here. And then we use this first row here and we get this result. So remember we have, if you have a uh, log, if you have a constant m log a x, it is equal to log a x raised to power m. Last one, uh, last one, we have uh, a common base. So first, we copy down the first item for this two. We move this two such that it becomes the power of X because of this property here. Then we copy down next item. Okay. So after this, I'll move this need space and it is just log four. So if you have plus, it is three times x square. If you have minus, so divided by y. So the final answer, log four, three x square over y. Okay. okay questions. All right, shall we take a break? Come back at seven o'clock, we continue the lecture. After lecture, we do tutorial, okay?
All right, welcome back from break. Hope you have a nice break. Uh, any questions? Okay, before break, we did some uh, simplification for logarithmic functions. Uh, now let's uh, move over. There are some properties of logarithm function. So if you have a base, it's just, so log b, b equal to one. So if you have log three, three, it is one. Log five, five, it is one. Okay. And then log b, one equal to zero. So why is this? Because the logarithm function is this. This is log bx. So when x equal to one, this is one. When x equal to one, y is zero. Okay. And then you have log b, b raised to power x. This is the same as log b, b x. You can move x in front of the log. So it is actually log b, b. Log b, b is one, so the result is x. And then this one, the last one here, is the combination of exponential function and the logarithmic function. So if you see this is b raised to power something, that is the exponential function. And inside this box, it is a logarithmic function. Okay. Remember exponential function and the logarithm function are inverse function. So you can cancel this exponential and the log. So the result is just X. They are inverse function. Okay, so for example, if you have three raised to power log, three X, the result is just three. If you have a five raised to power log, five Y, the result is Y. Okay, and if you have a six log six, then maybe nine, the result is nine. Okay. Questions? Okay. Uh, example, example. Base 10 log results. Uh, if you have base 10, we call common log results. Okay, we use symbol LOG. So LOG represents base 10. Uh, this question asks you to find the log result by using a calculator. Make sure you know how to use your calculator, okay? So find what is log, 426. So this is the same as log base 10, 426. So you can use calculator, I will just use Excel. Equal LOG and then bracket 426. So I got 2.649. So I just copy here to here. Okay, this is in Excel. Okay, I got in Excel you type in LOG bracket 426 you will get 
Um, okay, next, uh, log two. So this is the same as log base 10, then two. Okay. You can use Excel to do it. Um, maybe I'll choose here, oops. Okay, is it starter? Uh, then you have to use your calculator. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Log, log two. So type in equal log two. And make sure you know how to use your calculator, okay, to do it. So copy and paste it here. And you got zero point three. So Okay, last one, log 0 0.03654. So just go to Excel. Equal. Oops. Equal log bracket 0 0.03654. We got negative 1.43. Okay. 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 Questions. Use calculator or Excel. Uh, that concludes lecture part about logarithm and exponential functions. Any questions? Now let's do tutorial for module eight or lecture eight. There are total 20 questions in this tutorial. Okay. So determine question one. If the given functions are exponential function, the first one would be no. The first one would be no. Because b is less than negative, so b is less than one. Wow, perfect. So b is less than zero. Sorry. Yeah. So this one, b negative three less than zero. Remember that definition? It is um, a times b, zero, yeah. B, b, one. Thank you. So B greater than zero, B not equal to one. Okay. So the A is not exponential function. How about B? Uh, yes. B is yes, because the base is a three. It's like negative two times three. Exactly. You can consider this is negative two times three raised to power negative X. Hmm? So that is question one. Okay. Question two. Uh, please stop me if you have any questions. For online students, you can type in your questions in chat area or unmute yourself. In class students, you can directly speak up. Okay. Question two. Evaluate exponential function for the given x. Okay. So y equal to 125 raised to power x. What is y when x equal to negative two over three? Uh, read the question carefully when you do test two and final exam. The question asks you type an integer or simplify the fraction. You cannot give a decimal as an answer. You either an integer or simplified fraction. Mm -hmm. Okay. So for this one, you just plug in x. So y equal to 125 raised to power negative 2 over 3. 
just plug in x into this function. Okay. Uh, and then you know 125 is the same as 5 raised to power 3. 5 raised to power 3 is 125. And then you use a property. Okay. So the property, there is a property that if A raised to power M bracket raised to power N, it is equal to a raised to power m times n. So use this property. This becomes 5, 3 times negative 2 over 3. OK. So 3, 3 canceled out. You have 5 raised to power negative 2. And you have 1 over 5 raised to power 2. So final answer, 1 over 25 is the final answer. Okay. Questions? OK, question three. Uh, display the graph of the given function on a, a graph calculator. Uh, we don't have graph calculator, but this question asks you choose A, B, C, D. Okay. So choose Excellent. So when this question appeared on test two or final exam, you just need to, you, you are allowed to have piece of paper, graph paper. You just graph, pick some point for X, Okay. Oh, this one is not on test two. This one would be on final exam. This is module eight. So test two cover module two, modules, um, four, five, six. Yeah, module four, five, six, and seven. That is eight will be on final exam today's content, not on test two. Okay, you pick up some X then calculate y, and then you make a point on x, y plane, okay? And connect those point, you get the graph. Okay. Questions? Hmm. Question four, determine the value of unknown. Uh, so for this one, uh, we need to practice uh, the notation. So for example, log a, um, okay, we can directly do this. First, you write down 0 0.0005. It is just one over, 2000. How do I know? So it is actually, how do I know? It is actually, um, so it is actually equal to 0 0.0005 times one, one, two, three, four, divided by one, two, three, four. Do you agree 0 0.005 equal to I times 10,000 on both numerator and denominator? Okay. And then our numerator. Oh, to get rid of the decimal? Yeah, it is five. So denominator, it is this one. And then both numerator, denominator divided by five. So divided by five divided by five, numerator I got one, denominator I got this. That's why, and one over 2,000, one over 2,000 is the same as 2,000 raised to power negative one. Okay, that is the first step. Write down 0 0.0005, 
to 2000 raised to power 91. And then you plug in 2000 raised to power 91 into a rational expression. And then you use the property log B. Then B raised to power A equal to A. So this one is just negative one. Huh? Any questions for question four? Okay, question five. Determine, determine the value of unknown. So first, we can move this number five, move this number five as the exponent here. Move number five here. So this is a move number five here. So the original becomes log 32, a minus five bracket raised to power five equal to negative two. You can move a constant in front of log so that it becomes the power. And after that, uh, remember if you have log, a x equal to b, if you have this, that means a raised to power b equal to x. So 32 raised to power negative two equal to this, I got this one. I pause for a moment to see if you have questions. 30, based on this here, if you have log a x equal to b, and then a raised to power b equal to x. So you got this one. And after you got this one, you know 32 is the same as 2 raised to power 5, 2 raised to power 5, OK, and negative 2. I'll move this. Okay, so uh, determine the unknown value. So the question asks you to solve for A. Now I got one equation, one unknown. I can solve for A, right? Uh, actually, uh, let me see. There is a so you continue here. Uh -huh. See, yeah. So we are here. We are in this bracket now, and then um, left hand side you got log thirty two. Okay, um, so this is from here. I will remove some notation. So left hand side refer to here. Okay, we move number five here. So you are here. And from here, uh, we get here. 2 raised to power 5, negative 2. Okay, so we, we can continue from here. From here, any questions on this step here? This step. And the both equation, you raise to power 1 over 5. Actually, you directly from here. Maybe I will rewrite it. So I will rewrite a original question from scratch because there are too uh, many notations here. So the original question is five times log 32.
a minus five. equal to negative two. Okay. So this is a regional question. So there are many ways to do it. First step, I move this five into the power position. So it becomes a minus five raised to power five equal to negative two. And then this use exponential function format, 32 raised to power negative two equal to a minus five raised to power five. Okay. And after that, both sides I raised to power one over five. The reason is this five and one over five canceled out. So right hand side, I have a minus five. Left hand side, I have 32 raised to power two, then one over five. So 32 over negative two over five equal to a minus five. And 32 is the same as two raised to power five. And then five, five canceled out. So two raised to power negative two equal to a minus five. So a equal to two negative two plus five. So a equal to one over four plus five, 21 over four. Okay. So I'll show the starting point to see if you have questions. There are other ways to do it as well, if you want. Not this is not the only way. For example, this is a regional question. You can divide both sides by five you get log 32 a minus five equal to negative two over five. This is, this is another one method. Another method, you can do this. And from here, 32 raised to power, 32 raised to power negative two over five equal to a minus five. Okay, and 32 is two raised to power five, negative two over five. This is another way to do it. And then five, five canceled out, you have two raised to power negative two. And then one over four equal to a minus five. So a equal to, one over four plus five equal to 21 over four. This is another way to do it. Questions? Questions? Okay, so shall we go to next question? Yes. Okay, question, five. question six. Uh, again, question six asks you to plot the graph. Uh, again, during the test, you just take some X, take some Y, okay, and your graph. Um, so this is correct answer is this one. So for logarithm function, if you have this smaller than one, it is always like this. Okay, if you have, um, so for example, log b x, when you have b smaller than one, it is this one. 
when you have a log b x, when you have b greater than one, it is a this one. Log, it is this one. Um, questions? Okay. Question seven. This one is easy because, oh, sorry, for number seven. Yeah. Because it's log five, they're both log five. Yeah. And then four to the four, and then 16 is four squared. So, it's like terms. So it's log to the pi four and then to the exponent of four plus two. So it's log five four to the six. Excellent. So that this is because it's both log five. Yeah. And if it was different, then so if you have both log a log. and you have plus, it is just uh this times this. This is a fun property, okay? So you just use log five, four raised to power four times 16. Okay. Uh, the other way you can 16 is the same as uh, four raised to power four. 16 is the same as four raised to power two. Okay, so four raised to power six. Okay, questions? Okay, next. Question eight, solve logarithmic equation. So x equal to 10, then log 14. Remember, Exponential function and logarithm function are inverse. So it is just 14, they cancelled. <laughs> See this property here? Yeah. So exponential and log cancelled. They just. Okay. So we move to question eight, nine. Question nine and express the following as a sum, difference, or multiple logarithms. Uh, part of the logarithm may be determined exactly. So log seven, 35. So 35 is five times seven. And then it becomes log seven, five plus log seven, seven. Log seven, seven is one. Okay. So this is the correct answer. There are some property you need to remember will benefit uh, your calculation. Okay. So for example, if you have log a, a, it is one. Okay. This is log seven, seven, it is one. Okay, question 10, found anti-logarithm. Anti-logarithm anti means if you are given this number, so log, log what number equal to this given number? That is the anti-logarithm. Found x such that log 10x equal to negative 2.43. Six, five, four. So x is called anti-logarithm. X is called anti-logarithm of negative 2.4. So our objective is to find x. Okay, so if you have log, 10 x equal to negative 2.43. So x equal to 10 raised to power negative 2.43. Okay, then you can use Excel or calculator to find this number. So what is x raised to power negative 43? 
So I will try to find equal one raised to power bracket negative two point four three six five four. So this is Excel, okay? I got zero point zero zero three six six. This is using Excel. 0.0036. Question for question 10. Shall we move on question 11? Okay. Question 11. The signal used by some cell phones has frequency 9 times 10 raised to power 6 hertz. Found the logarithm of the given number. So what is the log? What is the log? Nine times 10 raised to power six. So log. So it is the same as log nine plus log 10 raised to power six. And then log 10 raised to power six is the same as log 10 equal to six. So you just need to find log, log 10. Uh, log nine, what is log nine plus six? So use Excel. I need to find out log nine plus six. So equal LOG bracket nine plus six. So equal to six point nine five four two four three. Okay. This is Excel. Question for question 11. The other way, if you use Excel, you can directly plug in original expression. I show you. So you directly do log nine times 10 raised to power six. Okay, so equal. LOG bracket nine times 10 raised to power six closing bracket. You directly do this. The same number. Okay. So when you use Excel, directly use original expression. Okay. And you got six point. Nine five four two. Questions? Okay. Question twelve. A little bit complicated. Question twelve. A certain type of optical switch in a fiber optic system allows a light signal to continue in one of four fibers. How many possible paths would a light signal follow if it passes 300 such switches? And the requirement asks you to use scientific notation. So first question, what is the scientific notation? Scientific notation is the same format, like this M times 10 raised to power N. This is called scientific notation. M times 10 raised to power N. Okay, 
So how do we solve this question? Yeah. So it passes through the switches before it gets to the filings. So one switch, one switch will go one of the four fibers. And how many switch you have? 300 switch. Oh. And the question is how many possible paths? So when you have one switch, you have one, two, three, four. You have one, two, three, four to go to. This is just one switch. When you have one switch, you have four possibility, right? When you have one switch, you can go here, go here, go here, go here. Just one switch. Now you have 300 switch. How many possibilities? This is the question. When you have 300, how many? So one, you have four. When you have two switches, you have another four possibility. When you have three switches, another possibility, blah, blah, blah. When you have 200, 300, so how many four? This is 300. Yeah, four raised to power 300. Okay. Four raised to power 300. One switch, you have four possibility. Now you have 300. So how many possibility? Four raised to power 300. Okay, so this is this one. And now our task is need to change four raised to power 300 to this format. We need to, the question asks you scientific notation, M times 10 raised to power N. To change to this format, we need to take logarithm of four raised to power 300. Okay. And what is the logarithm of four raised to power 300? You can move 300 in front of the log. Remember we have a property. And then it becomes log 10, four. And then use your calculator, figure out what is log 10, four times 300. I'm going to do Excel. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to do equals 300 times LOG bracket four. I need to this number. So this number equal to 180.62. Okay. And paste. So this is my Excel 180.62. Okay, and once you got this number, rewrite, then object, our objective is to figure out what is the four raised to power 300. Okay, and the answer is, if you have log four raised to power 300 equal to 180.62, so four raised to power 300 equal to 10 raised to power 180.62. Okay. And then 180.62 is the same as 180 plus six zero point six two. Uh -huh. So I would like maybe take more steps. We are here. 
and then equal to 10 raised to power 180 times 10 raised to power 0 0.62. So we are close to this format. Which format? M times 10 raised to power N format. Okay. So this is our M. 10 raised to power 0 0.62 is our M. So we need to figure out that number. Okay. Um, so use Excel, 10 raised to power 0 0.62. 10 raised to power 0 0.62. Okay, this number equal to 4.1687. One point. So this number, this equal to ten raised to power uh, ten times. What is that number again? Okay, so this is our final answer. Okay, so 4.16 times 10 raised to power 180. Any questions? Question 13. Shall we move to next question? Question 13. Uh, this question is um, about the current physical physics question. Use logarithms to perform the indicated calculation. The peak current uh, in alternating current circulate is given by this one. Uh, P is power developed. Z is the magnitude of the impedance. Six, theta is the phase angle between the current and the voltage. Evaluate I. Evaluate I for P equal to 6.75. Z 250 theta 31.7. So ask you to evaluate. Okay. So one way to evaluate, you can directly type in this expression into Excel. In Excel, square root use SQRT. So in Excel, you type in SQRT, then two times P, two times P. P is a 6.75, okay. Divided by Z, Z is 250, 250 times cosine, cosine uh, theta. In Excel, you have to change, the theta is given in degree, you have to change the theta from degree uh, to radians. Okay, so 30, for example, 90 degree equal to, uh, Pi over two, okay. Uh, 180 degree equal to pi. Left hand side is the degree. Right hand side is the radians. Okay, so different measurement. So you need to change the degree into radians. How? Oh, you use uh, this pi, pi is Okay, roughly this number, 
3.141926. This is pi. So 31. 31.7 degree equal to 3.1415926 divided by 180, okay, and times 31.7, okay. You need to change degree to radians. So this is how you come up with this one. Okay, just typing exactly what you see here, you get 0 0.252. So I'll demonstrate, I will de show you in Excel, okay? So I actually just uh, need to, okay. So in Excel, you directly type in Excel equal SQRT, blah, blah, blah. Type in this one in Excel you will get 0 0.252. I will show you now. Okay. Equal SQRT, two times 6.75 divided by bracket 250 times COS opening bracket okay, divided by 80, 180. You have to take all seven decimal places. Uh, yeah, usually you got more accurate result. Yeah. Oh, okay. So 31.7, three closing bracket. Uh, da, 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 da. So press enter, you got that number, 0 0.25, see? Okay. If I, you, you want to show the formula, this is the exact way I type in, in Excel. Questions? Okay, so this is question 13. Let me check online chart. Uh, no questions, okay. Okay, shall we move to question 14? Uh, question 14, describe verbally the transformations that can be used uh, from, to obtain the graph G from graph F. If you already have a graph F, how do you get a graph G? So first, what is the graph it's F the looks inverse. like? Uh, there is no inverse here, just choose those words. Oh, so if, if it's going in a positive direction, the other one going down. It is actually, so Fx, if Fx equal to Ex is this one, this is fx. How do you get gx? gx is fx plus one. It's the it's the mirror. And since fx equals e to the power of x have to go to zero and one, then the other graph would have to go through one zero. So which one would you choose? Down, left, up, so right? It is, oh, it should be up because it is plus one. You move this fx up to one unit, you go to GX. Oh, you're just shifting it. Yeah, how do you shift? Oh. How do you shift FX to get a GX? How do you shift FX? Shift to the right, shift to the left, shift down, shift up. That is the question. So the correct answer is up. Okay, shift to up. Questions? So question 15, solve x. Okay, so this is exponential function. So you just write down the exponent equal. After here, you solve for x, easy. 
Can I move ninety four x to right hand side? Keep left right hand side, and then move negative six to left hand side, and combine four x with eight x. Maybe next time you come back. So seven equal to twelve x. So x equal to seven over twelve. That's because they have the same basis. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Because remember, we talked about if a x equal to a uh, maybe um, y, if then x equal to y. Okay. Okay, question 16. Found the value of investment 20,000 for 14 years. Um, if annual interest rate is 3.15%, compound it continuously. Uh, after this question from module 11, 12, for now you can ignore this question. It is a financial mathematics compound interest. If you really want to know, this is the formula. Future value equal to present value times one plus interest raised to power n. I is 3%, 3.15% 3 compounded continuously. So you can consider compounded daily, 365. Term n is 365 times 14 because it is for 14 years. One year has 365 days. Plug in all these numbers, you get the answer. And the present value is 20,000. So F of A equal to 20,000. One plus I, I is 3.15% divided by 365. Term N, 365 times 14. And this would give you this number. That is a question 16. Questions? Uh, we have three questions left. Shall we continue or you want to break? If we continue, we can finish earlier. Okay, let's finish. Okay, we just have three questions. Okay. Uh, question 17. You did this one? Uh, in the lecture, it's in the lecture. Oh, okay, thank you. So 17, write the equation in equivalent logarithm function. So if you have a P equal to U raised to power M, what is the logarithm function? So M would be base U then P, okay? We practice this a lot, right? At the beginning of class. Okay. Question 18, discuss the validity, validity of the following statement and explain why it is true or false. If f is one to one, then domain f is equal to range. Is this true or false? If f function is one to one, then the domain equal to range. This is wrong because you can give a counter example. So for example, y equal to e raised to power x. And what is the domain of this? It is all real number. Okay, what is the range? The range is a positive real number. See, the domain not equal to range. X could be any value, but Y always greater than zero. Y always greater than zero. Okay, so the correct answer is A. This is multiple choice question. A counter example is y equal to e raised to power x. Questions? Okay. 
Okay, question 19, graph. Uh, y equal to five long x plus six. So again, when you graph, you take some x and take some y and you roughly graph to see which one looks like this one. Um, so questions? I don't get, it says where does the graph decrease it? And it, and it, the answer is the graph, the graph is never decreasing. But doesn't it decrease in the third, in the second quadrant? Oh, no, it's, no, it's still increasing. increasing. Uh, it is increasing all the time. It is increasing all the time. Questions? Okay, last question. Question 20. Again, question 20 is financial mathematics. If you are going to use a compound interest formula. So this is the formula for future value. Okay, uh, let's see the question. In first 10 years of mutual fund produced an average annual return of 20.82%. Assume money invested in this fund continues to earn 20.82% compounded annually. How long it will take in this fund to double? How long it will take double? So when you solve this kind of problem double, you assume original money is one dollar. When you double one dollar, it becomes two dollar, right? So your present value is one dollar, future value is two dollar, and you plug in this formula: future value, present value formula. Uh, the interest is twenty percent, twenty point eight two percent. How long it will take means solve for n. Solve for n. Okay, so you got two equal to 1.2082 raised to power two. Solve for this n. So n is so you I will rewrite this one to, to be clear. So let's rewrite. So two equal to 1.2082 raised to power. N, what is N? N is log 1.2082, then 2, right? And then you need to figure out, but the calculator does not have a base 1.2082. Calculator normally based on 10 or E as Excel. So you need to use the change base formula. The change base formula is this, log mn equal to log bn over log bm. This is a change base formula, okay? So for this one, we can use the change base formula. Uh, maybe we can change to natural number e, so it is ln two over ln 1.2082. And then in Excel, you just type in ln2 divided by ln. In Excel, you type in equal ln bracket 2 divided by ln bracket 1.2082 closing bracket. Okay, and you get 3.66. Okay. Yeah, then you have to figure out how to do it in calculator. Yeah, because the lockdown browser is totally there when you break it. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so that concludes uh, tutorial for module eight. It is about exponential functions and uh, um, logarithm, logarithm function. Okay. Uh, next class is next Tuesday, May 30, is our test two. 
uh, don't come to the class, now class after test two. Please watch the pre-recorded lecture for lecture nine. So when we come back on Thursday, we start lecture 10. Lecture nine is a pre-recorded lecture. Okay, I sent you email. Also, it is an announcement on Bright Space. Okay, uh, that concludes both lecture and tutorial. We do have some time. I love your questions. If you have questions, any questions, stay in class. If you do not have questions, feel free to leave class. Uh, remember, you have an option to email me for any questions you may have. Uh, please allow two business days to have your email answered. Okay. Uh, so we have class after test two. We do not have class after test two. Uh, you watch like the. the the pre-recorded lecture nine, okay? Uh, so thank you, Nasha, for asking the question. Uh, I just want to uh, close, uh, stop the video recording. Is that okay? Yeah. Yeah, you can. So I'm just going to oh, stop recording. Really